My name is Rich Brown, I'm a PADI instructor, and what I'd like to do is show you a, a quick review of how to set up your gear. We've got three different style BCs. You have your jacket style BC, you have a back inflate BC, and then you have a, a wing BC. What we're going to use today is the jacket style BC and how to properly affix it to your tank, to your cylinder. Okay. First thing you want to do, make sure that you get your air from a reputable air station. First and foremost, smell your air. Slightly open the tank valve, cupping your hand over, bring your face down and smell the air. If you don't smell any roses or anything, then it should smell odorless, okay? Next thing you want to know is to take and keep the opening of the tank valve facing as if you were wearing the jacket style BC to the back of your head. I'm going to turn around and make it easier. What you're going to do is you're going to loosen the tank strap, BC strap, placing it over the tank valve, slide it down, and how you want to measure whether or not it's in the right area is you want to be able to to be perpendicular underwater and looking forward so that the bank is so that the back of the valve is not touching the back of your head. So how you're gonna do that is you want to have it roughly about the same height as your back plate. Okay. Now a lot of problems can happen on the water when you simply just don't strap the BC tight enough. So how you want to, so strapping down the BC properly through the buckle, which I'll show you in another video, is if you notice the strap, by pulling, you can see that the, that the strap moves through the buckle, and all you need to do is once you lock it in place, it's not going to move, okay? Slide the strap through the end of the buckle and then use the rest of that pressure and it should lock into place. Okay, now testing to see if it is tight enough. First of all, you're going to know because it snaps into place. But a dry BC and a dry strap tends to loosen in the water as it expands. So what you want to do is move your feet out of the way. Have your hand underneath the tank valve and then just lift up and give a little tug. Now you're just putting your hand underneath the tank valve for support in case it does slip out. Now go ahead and put it down and notice if the strap moved up then you know that it wasn't tight enough and as you can see this one's plenty tight enough and it did not move. So now we're going to fix the regulator and you notice that the opening of the tank valve is facing the back of your head as if you were wearing the jacket. Okay, so I'll reach into my bag and pull out the regulator. So, the easiest way to do this is to have your second stages in your right hand. Okay. You're behind the BC, you're behind the tank, and you have the yoke screw facing you. Now, if you follow those two rules, then it's virtually impossible to put it on incorrectly. Now you're going to un loosen out the dust cover just until it falls out as I did. Now you place the opening of the tank valve with the opening of the first stage. And what you're going to do here, when you screw it down, you're going to screw it just finger tight. Okay, there's no need to wrench it down because there is an O-ring that's going to lock with the pressure from the air, from the tank. Okay, so it shouldn't move laterally like this, but axially, or what is that, radially? <laughs> so then what you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to put all your attachments together. So in this case, we're going to take the low pressure inflator hose and it has a pulley system right here. You pull, push on, and then lock into place. And then just give it a little tug so that you know it's secured. All right, now we can take these 
and just ensure that they don't go anywhere in our dive. Now what you're going to do is in case there's a, a malfunction in the regulator when you do turn on the air, this plate right here, very improbable and highly unlikely, but wouldn't it be better to be safe than sorry? So we're gonna take and hold the hose, the high pressure hose, and we're gonna face it away from you and everyone else around us. So, uh, in this case, we'll face it towards the pool, assuming there's no one in there. And we're just gonna crack as if we were smelling the air, and you'll see that the hoses actually fill up with air. Once that happens, as you can see, then go ahead and crack it. Oh, turn it open all the way until it stops. Okay? No need to to wrench it open any for any more than what than until it stops. Okay? There is there's an uh, there's an O-ring in there as well that if you open it too hard, you're going to damage that eventually over time. So then go ahead and look at your air, and you see it's full, and there you go. So properly setting your VC and your cylinder down while you're setting up and getting into your wetsuit is a good rule of thumb, especially on a boat where there's a lot of rocking. You also may turn your air back a half a turn. Some people uh, have become, um, in the, have gotten in the habit of doing that and that's fine as well. Uh, so that when you do your buddy checks, you can actually turn just a half a turn back and then you know it's all the way open. Whereas if you're accidentally buddies turning it the wrong way, Oh yeah, you forgot to turn your air on and then he just turned it off. Now your air is completely off. So better to do it that half a turn back and then at least you've got some air, right? Um, so that's, that's just the reason why some people do that half a turn back and then some people have talked about the overhead ob uh, obstructions where they'll accidentally, um, in a very unlikely situation, uh, jam the uh, tank in into the open position um, if they didn't turn it back a half a turn. So there's a few different reasons, um, but simply just turning it and leaving it all the way open is fine. Thank you, and have a safe dive. Slowly ascend from every dive.